But I wouldn't get all of those experiences if I didn't have the gift of cerebral palsy and if everything was completely easy for me, I wouldn't need to lean on the strong arm of Jesus all the way home. Not every difficulty um, is horrible. And I really feel that in a world that really wants to hear nothing about Jesus, or on the other hand, feels that sometimes they know everything about Jesus. My little limp is a part of my sermon. And hopefully he is most glorified in my weakness. And so it was just absolutely a very unconventional and beautiful way to continue my process of not just overcoming because that's what I know how to do. But how to let go. And how to be tired. And how to let that be all right. And uh, so yeah, I'm adopted and <clears throat> my parents were 17 and my biological mother was seven and a half months pregnant when she had the saline abortion and, that you heard about. And a saline abortion is to uh, burn a baby inside and out, blind the child, and ultimately suffocate the baby. And the baby is to be born dead within 24 hours, except that I was born alive after 18 hours of being burned alive in my mother's womb. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is clearly due to the the power of Jesus Christ. I I mean it when I say that I'm his girl. <laughs> so I love the Lord because he's hilarious to me. He's not like super serious all the time. I mean, he's very intense, clearly he's God. But I'm intense. And um I love that he is is how he makes his point though about things and what I'm getting at is this here I'm born in an abortion clinic first of all at six o'clock in the morning which was perfect timing because had I been born at any other moment in time he would have been at work which he wasn't at work yet on April the 6th 1977 at six o'clock in the morning he would have ended my life with strangulation suffocation or leaving me there to die however he wasn't there, and I was. So the nurse called an ambulance and had me transferred to a hospital, which saved my life. But he didn't know uh, what he was going to have to do, and that <laughs> he was going to have to sign my birth certificate. So here this punk is trying to take me out. Me. He's trying to take me out. And I, the one thing that is just annoying me, annoying me in our culture and world right now is this. I feel like we treat Jesus and, and, and refer to him all the time as if he's just a woman. He's just feminine all the time and every single day now he's weeping all the time and he never picks a fight and he certainly never wins any and he's just so nice and so la la like a greeting card and I'm like no he is a lion he is fierce there is a reason that every single man I have ever met on the planet loves the movie Braveheart And every single normal woman I have ever met on the face of the earth loves every single man like that. We're all like, blue war paint, yes. Hello, yes, freedom, aha. Uh -huh. I find controlling women do not admire men like that. And there are a ton of controlling Christian women I've had five years of therapy. I learned a lot about it. I love Jesus and my therapist. Praise the Lord. No shame. Anyway, um, it's great when you can get into a point in life where you really don't care what everybody thinks. It really is. It's, it's true freedom. 
Um, so, when I think about the Lord causing, <laughs> making this man who m m hours before is trying to end my life, sign my birth certificate, I can imagine the brave heart side of God going, sign here. You will acknowledge her life. You will never, ever, ever, ever be able to forget this girl. Not because she'll march around the world talking about how you deserve hell and all of this stuff. No, in fact, she will march around the world proclaiming Jesus Christ and reminding you every single time you try to ignore her that you, sir, are in need of that redemption and you, sir, are worthy of it because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And so uh, I don't run around the world this bitter, angry, whatever chick. I don't have time for that. Um, I want to live and die and have left beauty in the world and sweetness in the world and humor in the world and I don't know all the loveliness that I possibly can. So, the nurse called the ambulance and had me transferred to the hospital where I was placed in an incubator weighing two pounds. They said, this kid will never live. I kept living. After several months, they said, this baby girl has a tremendous will to live and she doesn't want to die. Ha! Pretty true because that will is still present with me and the reason it is is that it is he who works in me both to will and to do according to his good pleasure a word for a word uh, uh, for just a moment to the parents of the so-called strong-willed child in the room I remember being told, John, of that book, I guess it was written in the 70s, the strong-willed child was written about you, blah 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 can I just say something? It has taken every ounce of the will that I possess to learn to walk twice, to get up in airports when I fall down, to have people tell me horrendous things and keep going for the name of Jesus. If you have a strong-willed child that is driving you up a wall, praise the living God, because most likely that strong-willed child has an immense destiny, and its will, that child's will, does not need to be shamed, merely guided. Because how many times have you ever seen anyone with a, who lacks will change anything at all? There is no way that I could overcome for Christ without the strong will that I was so shamed for. And I don't know why we are so fond as Christians of shame. Never has worked for me. And I have never had a conversation with Jesus where he has ever operated in that with me. It is, it is his kindness that leads me to repentance. So, you just might want to think that over with the kids that are making you crazy. They're probably going to change everything.